Hi, welcome back to our class. Last time, I discussed about the atomic structure, the components of atom, the electronic configuration, and the Dalton's atomic theory. Today, let's continue discussing this chapter on atoms, ions, and the periodic table. So I will start with the ions. Now, ions are charged particles. These are formed when an atom loses or gains an electron or electrons. Now, there are two forms of ions, the cation and the anion. The cation is a positively charged particle. This is formed when an atom loses an electron, while an anion is a negatively charged particle. This is formed when an atom gain an electron or electrons. For example, the sodium atom. The sodium atom is of course charge zero, but when this ionizes, it will become charged. Now what is the charge of sodium? The sodium atom, as we all know, has 11 electrons two of which are found in the first energy level, eight electrons are found in the second energy level, and one electron is found in the third energy level. Now, when the sodium atom forms its ion, the outermost energy level electron, which is called the valence electron, will be given up or it will be lost so that when this electron is given up, it means that the number of negative particles becomes 10. But the number of positively charged particles is 11. So if you're going to get the difference between the number of positive particles and that of the negative particles, we have the number of positive particles remain to be 11, while the number of negative particles becomes 10, because one of which is being given up or lost. So subtracting 10 from 11, there is a positive one particle that is in excess. So this positive particle is the charge of the sodium atom. On the other hand, when an anion is formed, there is the gain of electron or electrons. Say, for example, we have the chlorine atom. Of course, as an atom, it is charged zero yet. But when chlorine ionizes, it will become a charged atom. So it is now an ion. How will a chlorine ion be formed? Now, if you're going to make a diagram of the chlorine ion, there are 17 electrons. So it follows that there are also 17 protons. When the atom form its ion, we know that chlorine has 17 protons and 17 electrons two of which are found in the first energy level, eight of which are found in the second energy level, and the seven electrons are found in the third energy level. So these seven electrons are called the valence electrons. When this chlorine atom ionizes, it will gain electron in order to stabilize the third energy level to have eight electrons. And because it gains an electron, the number of electrons now for chlorine atom will become 18. But the number of protons in the chlorine atom remains to be 17. 
if you're going to get the difference between the number of electrons and that of the number of protons, then there is an excess of one negative particle. So this one negative particle, which is actually the gained electron, is the charge of the ion. So that the charge of chlorine is negative one. So that is all about the ions. Let's go to what a molecule is. Now a molecule is composed of two atoms chemically bonded together. Now there are kinds of molecules. One we have the diatomic molecule and the other one is the polyatomic molecule. Now for the diatomic molecule there are also two types. One is the homonuclear diatomic molecule, and the other one is heteronuclear diatomic molecule. For the homonuclear diatomic molecules, these are composed of two similar atoms. For example, we have oxygen. Its diatomic form is O2. Or we have the hydrogen. Its diatomic form is H2. We have also chlorine, Cl2. We have also bromine, which is Br2. Actually, all gases found in the periodic table are diatomic in nature. And secondly, all the halogens are also diatomic in nature. What are the gases found in the periodic table which are diatomic? These are the oxygen, the hydrogen, the nitrogen. And the halogens are the fluorine, the chlorine, the bromine, and the iodine. The noble gases are not diatomic because they are already very stable. The other type is the heteronuclear diatomic molecule. For these heteronuclear diatomic molecules, these are composed of two different kinds of atoms. Say for example, the hydrogen chloride or the HCl, the hydrogen fluoride or the HF, and the hydrogen bromide. So they are composed of different atoms. And for the polyatomic molecules, these are composed of more than two atoms. Say for example, you have ozone. Ozone is already O3. There are already three atoms of oxygen. Then we have also the carbonate. So you have CO3. The charge is negative too. Then we have also the carbon dioxide, and so on and so forth. So those are some examples of molecules, the diatomic molecules and the polyatomic molecules. Let's go back to the atom. According to Niel Bohr, the energy of the electrons of the atom are quantized. So what do we mean by quantize? By quantize, it means that these electrons possess an energy and are described by numbers. There are four quantum numbers that describe the energy of the electrons in an atom. The first is the principal quantum number. Now, this principal quantum number describes the energy level where the electrons occupy. If you're going to recall, there are energy levels described to be electron cloud where the electrons occupy. So what are these energy levels? We have the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level, the fourth energy level, the fifth, and so on and so forth. 
These energy levels are also known as the shells. So if we're going to call them as shells, we have the K shell, L, M, N, and so on and so forth. Now, each energy level is composed of sublevels. So that what are the sublevels? For the first energy level, we have the S sublevel. In the second energy level, there, there are two sublevels, which are the S and the P. In the third energy level, there are three sublevels, which are the S, the P, and the D. And in the fourth energy level, we have the S, the P, the D, and the F. And each sublevel is having an orbital. So we have discussed this last time that in the S sublevel, there is the S orbital. In the P sublevel, we have the PX, PY, and the PZ orbitals. In the D sublevel, we have D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5 orbitals. And for the F sublevel, we have the orbitals F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, and F7. So let's go back to the quantum numbers. Now, there are four quantum numbers, the first of which is the principal quantum number. This principal quantum number describes the energy level where the electrons occupy. So you know already what are the energy levels where the electrons occupy. Now, the value of this principal quantum number ranges from 1 up to the highest energy level that the electrons of the atom can occupy. And it is represented by the symbol N. So if we have the atom hydrogen, we know that the atom hydrogen has only one electron. So if you get the electronic configuration of the atom hydrogen, it's only 1s1. This one electron occupies only the energy level 1. So if you are asked, what is the principal quantum number for the atom hydrogen, the answer is N equals 1. The second quantum number is the azimuthal quantum number, or this is commonly known as the secondary quantum number. In some other books, this is called the angular quantum number. This quantum number describes the shape of the orbital where the electrons occupy. And it has a value from 0 to n minus 1. So what does that mean? Since this is dependent on the value of L, so if the value of L is 1, the azimuthal quantum number will be 0. But if the principal quantum number equals 2, so the azimuthal quantum number will be 0 and 1. If the principal quantum number equals 3, so the azimuthal quantum number will be 0, 1, and 2. Since the limit or since the range of the azimuthal quantum number is from 0 to n minus 1. The third quantum number is the magnetic quantum number. This magnetic quantum number describes the orientation in space of the electrons occupying the energy level. And this is given the symbol m sub l. Now, the m sub l has a value which is dependent on l. So that M sub L has a value 
starting from the negative of L, passing through zero to the positive of L. So if the azimuthal quantum number L equals one, then the magnetic quantum number will be plus one, zero, negative one, or negative one, zero, positive one. What if we have the value of L equals two? So the value of the magnetic quantum number will be minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. Or if the azimuthal quantum number is three, so the value of the magnetic quantum number is minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. So that means that the value of the magnetic quantum number depends on the azimuthal quantum number. The fourth quantum number is the spin quantum number. For the spin quantum number, this describes the rotation of the electrons in its orbital. The rotation or the spin of the electrons in its orbital is either clockwise or counterclockwise. Since we say that in each orbital, it can accommodate two electrons. So these electrons, one of which will take the positive spin and the other one takes the negative spin. It is also said that if there is an unpaired electron, this unpaired electron in the orbital will take a negative spin. So those are all about the quantum numbers. For your assignment next meeting, I would like you to read about the periodic table. Otherwise, kindly equip yourself with periodic table so that as I'm going to discuss the periodic variations, you will be able to easily understand it. So that would be all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Nisita Suruiz of Holy Name University.